Righto, tell you dear champs. Now, today I want to talk about a laptop that will probably ruin you. And in some ways, it's ruined me, I can tell you. And it's this gorgeous laptop here. Yes, the XPS 13 Plus. And Marco Pierre White once said, perfection is just lots of little things done well. So, you know, you get good or elite in every category, you come up with perfection. This thing here is very close to perfection. And in some ways it's ruined me because I've got another Ultrabook in here and it's like really gorgeous. It's really good. It's premium in every way. But I mean, it doesn't look like this thing here. The reality is laptop manufacturers haven't caught up to the 2020 XPS 13 design and it ruins you in a way that, you know, once you go to this laptop, this XPS 13 Plus and then go to another one, they look a bit dated, right? So why is this almost perfect? Design, build quality, top notch when it comes to design. I mean, it is premium, no doubt. There are other premium laptops that, you know, have the same sort of build quality, but none look as futuristic as this. The Infinity Edge display, that edge-to-edge -edge keyboard, there's no trackpad. They've deleted the trackpad. It just, wow, it is amazing and... It is the future of laptops now. The only sort of other laptops that sort of, you know, can hold a candle to this like being futuristic is maybe some of the Zephyruses. I actually have one in. Stay tuned for that one. But when it comes to Ultrabooks, nothing is as hot as this, as modern as this, as clean as this. If we have a look at the specs, well, it's the best specs you can get sort of in the Windows world, isn't it? It's like Intel 12th generation up to 1260p, you know, fast DDR RAM, Wi-Fi 6E, all the good stuff in terms of specs. It is compact, light. An easy laptop to carry around. It has two Thunderbolts, one on either side, which I really like. And the great thing about that being two Thunderbolt 4s is you can expand it, right? The expandability of this laptop is like endless. You know, the M2, you can only put one display. This thing, multiple displays, eGPU, all that stuff you can do with, you know, Thunderbolt 4. I have a gaming review with this XPS 13. Check it out. I mean, I've hooked up an eGPU to it. I showed that you can play AAA titles, even on the integrated graphics. It's a great platform and it only takes one cable to expand it all. The sound is really good. It's one of the best sounding laptops in the Windows world. So it gets a check there. Keyboard, excellent. Trackpad, excellent. And they've deleted the trackpad. It looks so good. The trackpad works really well. The keyboards are amazing. Maybe you don't like the capacitive touch keys or the sort of white backlight on white keys, but the actual keyboard itself is just really nice and lush. So it gets a tick in that department too. Displays, top class displays. If we're talking Ultrabooks here, some of the best display options with touch. This one here, this lush, gorgeous pretty much nearly 3k oled display it is a sight to behold of course 4k option and you can start off with a 1200p display if you want to go to a lower resolution it's elite in the display categories as well when it comes to performance well i wish there was a 1280p option in this and actually an amd option but then you wouldn't probably get thunderbolt but as i said before go check out my gaming review you can play AAA titles on this and expand it of course with an eGPU. when it comes to cpu performance you can go check out my m2 macbook air versus xps 13 plus video and you'll see that you know cpu wise it's a little bit faster than the m2 mac and gpu wise it gets a pass it's good enough it's not quite as good as the m2 or the amd graphics but for an ultrabook i'm still amazed today that we can play AAA titles on ultrabooks and with this performance you don't get a lot of heat and noise like i barely heard the fan at all even gaming it was very low the fan you do have the option to go in and put it in like a higher powered mode then you will hear the fans but even then it's not that bad the internal heat's not that bad it doesn't really overheat unless you have it in that performance mode where it will get hot but even then you wouldn't actually know outside that it's actually hot on the inside and i guess it's up to you do you want the fan noise extra performance well you can have it do you want silence bliss you can have that too it's up to you and one good thing about this like compared to the m2 max you can upgrade the storage there so when you think about it this laptop is nearly perfection it's nearly elite in every single category except for one Yes, we have to talk about the battery life. Now, the battery life is fine. It is what I would say is good, especially for this display option being, you know, high resolution OLED. But it certainly isn't class leading with the battery. I get around eight hours battery life. If you've got the entry level display, you'll probably get over 10 hours battery life. And with the 4K, I would assume you would lose a little bit of battery life, might only get about seven hours. So it is good enough. It gets a tick in that category. You know, for me, eight hours is all day battery life. But do bear in mind, there are other laptops with 
you know, longer battery life, like the M2 Max, you know, they're going to get over, you know, 12, 14 hours. And even some of the AMD laptops are going to get over that 10 hours. So, yeah, gets a tick there. But it is the one area where it's not elite. Other than that, pretty much in every single category, elite, battery life, okay, it's good enough. So it's nearly perfection. And using this laptop and going to, you know, another one, I've got to tell you now, sort of ruined me a little bit there. So anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.